Hi all. Let's do some more Ruby. Uh, we're going to do number three. Uh, it's just got these files in it. So let's put that on C colon. Go C colon. And inside C, I created this folder here. And we'll just drag this folder into here. I'll put a shortcut on the desktop to that folder. So there's our files. And let's go ahead and start the Ruby prompt. And it saved my settings from last time, so I don't have to change the uh, background and the font and, and things like that. Uh, I think I will make that font a little bigger. Okay, so let's uh, CD to C colon. And we'll CD into the Ruby folder. And then CD into the O3 folder. Do a DIR to see the files. And there's our 10 files. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or there's 11 in, in this one. So Okay, we'll clear the screen. CLS clear the screen. I just like the work off the top. It just makes it a little cleaner. You can see what you're working on. So we're going to run number one here. We'll run it and then we'll come back and talk about it. So just say use Ruby and run the 01 file. hit enter and it displays this text okay so if we right click it go open with notepad there's our file so we've gone over the print command but this is just an example of how to put a comment inside your code in Ruby we start our comments with the uh, pound sign so Comments are just notes to yourself inside the code. Uh, so you can, uh, it helps you remember what you did down the road. You know, These simple examples really don't matter much, but as your programs get bigger, it's nice to put small comments in so you can remember what and why you did something here. So it also helps if you're working on a bigger project where you have other people looking at the same code so it's nice to comment your code okay so let's run number two You can see here the same thing, but we put the comment after the code. Here we have our code, we have our print statement, and we put the comment here, as opposed to putting it here. You know, both are used, both are common ways to put comments inside your code. Sometimes you put it at the top, sometimes you put it off to the side. Okay, number three. 
Now we're getting into something different. In the previous videos, we only did strings, you know, text. Now we're going to do some numbers. So it's the same type of idea. We're storing the number 2 inside a variable, my number. And then when we print it out, it's a little trickier to print it out, but that's the way it's done inside Ruby. So we just take the variable name, put it inside braces, curly braces, and then put a pound sign in front of it. So that is kind of a complicated way to print out a variable. See, the variable is inside of a string. We're printing this text to the screen. So that's what makes it kind of hard. So it prints out number is and colon, number is and a colon, and then it goes to the variable and grabs the two and prints the two. Okay, and just like in strings, in most other languages, you normally have to tell the program what data type this is. Data type. You know, that's a, a fancy word that you should know. What is the data type? So normally, like you would have to go int. Yeah. My number is an int, is an integer. And we're going to store the number 2 in it. Okay? But again, in Ruby, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, something else that's common is you'll see stuff like this. They create a variable called my number. The data type is int, is an integer. We're going to store integers inside my number. Then we take the number 2 and store 2 in my number. So that's what you'll see in other types of languages. But in Ruby, we don't have to worry about any of that. We just do that, and Ruby knows what we're talking about. Okay. So that's number three. Okay, this is the same type of deal as with the integers, but it, the example is just a little bigger. We're creating a variable called my num, storing a 5 in it. Then we're creating a variable called my num2, and storing a 2. Then we're creating a total, and we're storing 0 in it. This step really isn't necessary, but it's nice to do that because uh, it clears out the, uh, the area in memory where we're going to store a number, so we don't, get, we don't get any junk. And then here we're doing some math, and it's kind of backwards from what we're used to seeing. You know, we're storing these two numbers and putting the total here. So don't let that mess you up. It's no big deal. You know, sometimes that type of thing will mess up math people because they're used to seeing it the other way around. You know, total should be 
over here, right? But in uh, computer programming, we do it like this. Uh, mine number one, and then add mine number two. So we're taking five plus two and storing a seven in here. And then we print it out the same way we did in the previous example. Print my number is with, with the colon. That's where this comes. My number is with the colon. And then this guy here goes and grabs the 7 from my total and prints out the 7 here. Okay, so that's how you create multiple variables, and we're doing some addition here. Okay, so next is number five. If we just grab these and drag them on top of here, on top of Notepad, they'll open up. You can see how now we have number five open here. Okay, so let's run number five. His number is three. So this is the same as the previous one, but we're doing subtraction. So 5 minus 2 is 3. That's how we get the 3. Okay, so that's an easy one. 6, this is number 6. Same thing, but we're doing multiplication. So we got 5 times 2, 5 times 2 is 10. And then number 7, same thing, but we that's how we get division. We use the forward slash, right? One's backward slash, leans backward, forward slash, leans forward. So this would be a division. There is no d division sign on the keyboard. So we use the forward slash. So this is number seven. Five divided by two is two. Eight. So this is number eight. Here's another way to put a comment into your code. See the ones we did earlier. These were just for like one line of code. If we wanted to, you know, we could do stuff like this to put in multiple lines. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, right? That's fine. But they have another way to comment your code, and that's with a begin and end statement. And then this whole section here w would be a comment. Uh, you don't have to indent these, but I just indented them to make it easier to read. Uh, usually indentation is a uh, personal thing, you know, some people like to indent less, some people like to indent more, you know. but usually four, four spaces is a good rule of thumb.
for your code. So we'll get into that when we do the uh, other files. So this again is kind of odd. You know, it starts it with an equal sign, and then use the word begin. And you end it with the equal sign and the word end. So, first time I've ever seen anything like that. So. Okay, so next one shows how to get an exponent inside of your code. Uh, there's all types of little math things that you can use to get. Uh, uh, mathematical functions inside your code. I'm just going to run through a few examples for the math people out there. So let's see here. Okay, so this is what they would mean by uh, 5 to the power of 3. If you saw it on a piece of paper, it would be written like this. Five with a little three written up up a little bit. There's a couple different ways to say the same thing. Five to the third power. Five cubed. See that would be five cubed. And all it is is five times five times five. So how would you get that inside of your code? You would use two asterisks. So 5 to the third power. Okay, so this is number 8. So 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 would be 125. So that one's kind of tricky. That's 8. Next we'll do number 9. Let's run it first and see what it does. number is 3. We'll open the file. So what this does is it returns the remainder after a division. So we've got 11 divided by 4. 4, 8, 4 goes into 11 two times, right? And then there's 3 left over. So 3 is the remainder. That's how we get a 3 here. Now this percent sign, that's how we get the modulus. So let's run through this. This first part is just a comment. This starts the comment. This ends the comment. So we have 11 modulus 4, and it returns the remainder of 3. So you can think of this as like 11 divided by 4. 4 goes into 11 two times, and the remainder is 3. Okay, so we have my num1 is 11, my num2 is 4, my total, we set that to 0. Then we do the math here. Okay, 11 mod 4, it returns the remainder of 3, and then we do the print statement number is 
colon. That's this part. Number is colon. And 3 will store it in here, right? So 3 comes down to here. And this guy grabs the 3 and prints out the 3 here. Okay, so number 10. This is an example of precedence. So let's go over this one here first. Uh, it's just a little math. Don't put too much thought into this, but it's a simple one. So it just has to do with the order on how these are going to execute. So normally, most people would th think, you know, you go 2 plus 3 is 5, and then times 4 is 20, right? But that's not the way it's going to happen because of precedence, you know. The multiplication is going to happen first just because of that's how the math works okay so an easy way to remember that is this my dear aunt Sally multiplication happens first then division then addition and then subtraction the way th this stands multiplication is gonna happen first because of this my dear aunt Sally stuff so 3 times 4 would be 12, plus 2 is 14. So you can see because of precedence you get two totally different numbers here. Now the tricky part is, well, what if we want the addition to happen first? Well then we can change the precedence by putting parentheses around these. So if we put parentheses around this part, then 2 plus 3 is going to happen. We get 5 times 4, and then we get a 20. Okay? So that's what this is an example of. So this is number 10. Okay, and uh, let's see what we did here. Okay, so this section is a comment. This is an example of precedence. My dear Aunt Sally. And then number one is two. Number two is a three. Number three is a four. In total, we're gonna make total a zero. And then this first part, we go num1 plus num2, num3. So this part's going to happen first, right? So 2 and 3. So we got 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So that's where we get this 14 here. My number is, is printed out with the colon, and then it takes my total, which is 14, and inserts it here. Here's the 14. And then we did a new line. We went over that in the previous videos. And then we did some more math here. But we changed the precedence with these parentheses here. So my number 1 plus my number 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. Times 4 is 20. Times 4 is 20. 
and that's how we get the 20 here. Okay, so this is just a real simple example to show you how to get precedence inside of your applications. And you can see these start to get big really quick. Just with some real small silly examples, they get big uh, really quick. So. <coughs> and number 11 with decimal points. Let's run it and see what happens here. Okay, so 1.1, 1.1, 2.1, is going to be 2 and 3, 3.2. So that's how we get the 3.2 here. 1.1 plus 2.1 is 3.2, and my number is with the colon is printed out here and then we took the 3.2 which is stored here and printed that out here okay and I think we'll go ahead and stop there I'll see you in the next one bye